Hey guys. All right. So if you guys are in this situation like I was a couple of days ago, I just want to tell you guys how you guys can get your car started. So basically this situation is a crank no start issue. So basically my car worked fine for the longest time. I had no issues whatsoever. Battery was good. Haven't had a battery issues at all. And out of nowhere, I parked it, uh, got a crank no start issue. And the thing about it is, it drove fine the whole entire day. Had no issues whatsoever. I went to a bunch of places. I drove it to, to, to the store, to the pet shop. I even got a couple of goldfishes when this occurred. It was pretty much at the end of the day. All right. Got some goldfishes at PetSmart. Went to a CVS to pick up something to drink. And got back out. Tried to start my car. And all I got was a crank. But it would not run. Crank, it would not run. Crank, it would not run. And I tried to start it multiple times. So I was a little bit worried because it's very, very, very warm out. And probably like in the, in, in the mid 90s. Had some goldfish in a bag. And I was worried that those goldfish might die. So I was a little bit stressed out with the whole situation. All right. Um, I did get some of the drink. Uh, I did get uh, a can of Coke in Arizona. And they were kind of cold. So I actually put it uh, in the bag where the goldfish were. And hoping that the goldfish would survive. But that's neither near here nor there. And um, so I, I turned on my headlights. All right. Just to see whether it could be a battery issue. Because the battery was never changed. I did not know the condition of the battery. Or how old the battery was. Did not know the condition of, of the battery terminals. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But I know that I didn't have any issues previous to this. I turned on my headlights. Went out. Checked. The headlights were very, very bright. The cranks were very, very strong. It wasn't like it was struggling to crank. It wasn't like it was struggling to crank at all. It was very, very, the cranks were very, very strong. All right. Now, knowing from previous experiences, if the battery is weak, I would normally get a weak crank. Like it would try to start, but it wouldn't. And the more you crank it, the 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 weaker it got till it just would not crank it on you because your battery's dead. However, I was getting strong cranks, but but I had to eliminate the battery 100% in this situation because you never you never know because there's like a lot of electrical parts in the car and you never know. All right. Well, you kind of know, but you never really know because I when when it comes to troubleshooting vehicles I I, I want to just go through down the list and just eliminate one after another after another after another all right so so I actually got to the battery and I was looking at it now I didn't know what shape the battery was in it did look really old the terminals were really dirty and the terminals were a little bit loose. So what I did was um, I took the terminals off. I got some paper towel. I took my Coke and poured it on the terminals. Cleaned it up as best I could. And cleaned off the, a lot of the green, whitish stuff that was on there. Um, popped it back on. Tried to start it. And did the same thing. Strong crank won't start. It, it didn't start. Strong crank didn't start. So I was thinking to myself, you know what? I was still getting a strong crank after like cranking it seven times. And 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 to me, 
that pretty much says that the battery is pretty good. Even though the battery looked kind of old, pretty old, but it was under the hood. It was, it was the battery. Um, you know, after a while, if if, if you put anything and, and and not look at it after a while, you get dust on it and dirt and on all that grime and all that stuff, right? <clears throat> so I was thinking to myself, ninety percent sure it's not the battery. I can't say a hundred percent. Can never rule out. Any, you can can never rule that out unless you're able to 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 get the car started. Or are you able to test it out? So I, I didn't really have a jumper on me. I didn't have a jump pack to jump, jump, jump it. So I didn't. I wasn't able to uh, to, to test say a hundred percent was in the battery. But seeing as how the the the, the headlights were bright and and, and it was uh, cracking strong after seven tries, I, I I eliminated the battery altogether. All right, I eliminated the battery altogether. Now I was thinking to myself. With this scenario, it could be a lot of different things, right? It could be the camshaft position sensor, because you can't can't crankshaft position sensor. It could be the throttle position sensor. It should it could be the mass airflow sensor, because there's like a lot of sensors um, on the vehicle. It could be a lot of different things, but here's how I was able to eliminate um, all those things. Uh, I was able to eliminate all those things because normally, if any of those things were to cause this situation, there would be a check engine light. There would be a check engine light, and in, 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 um, sometimes the check engine light would be blinking, uh, telling you that it's, a, it's more of a serious issue. But here's the thing. I, I, I did not see a check engine light on a dash. There was no check engine light. Um, I, know, I know that uh, 100%. Not that I was checking out for the check engine light, being an issue, but uh, I was looking at the dash uh, the whole entire day, glanced here and there, uh, did not did not see a check engine light uh, on dash. So I, I know, now I, I can't rule that out as 100% because I couldn't get the car to, to, to start up. Now, if it started up and there was no check engine light, <clears throat> You know, I, I could say 100% that it wasn't the check engine light. And I didn't have an OBD2 to, to pop it in to, 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 to scan it. Did not have an OBD2 to, to pop it in to scan it. Um, however, I, I was going to rule that out because uh, I was going through scenarios as best as I can because it was getting pretty warm and my goldfish my, my goldfishes were going to die. So I was like, all right, all right, all right. Should I call triple A? Maybe I could go back into CVS with the goldfish and put it in the um, in in the fridge, you know. And but you know, I, I was like twenty minutes into that, and I, I had to get something. I, I had to get something. Well, I was hoping that it was an easy fix. Get something. All right, so I was like thinking to myself. What else could it be besides this? All right, uh, so I, I, I checked out the fuses. All right, checked out the fuses, made sure that you know I didn't smell anything that was burnt. I didn't see anything like, kind of burning on the top of the fuses. Um, and and I looked at the fuses, and everything looked everything looked good. Now I didn't have a fuse tester to test it out, but just from eyesight, everything looked good. Smell test didn't look like anything burnt out. Um, I did actually check. A couple, I think I checked a couple of specific fuses. I'm not, uh, but but none of them looked like they were bad. All right, so at that point, I was thinking to myself, it could be the relays, it could be maybe the fuel pump relay, the fuel pump itself, the car's ECU that's the problem. And I got back into my car, um, you know, and I, I thought to myself, well, could it be the fuel pump? And, and 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 I tried turning on the car to the on, trying try to turn on to the the on position, right? The position before the crank. I was trying to turn it on to the on position before the crank, a couple of times just to see, just to see if I could hear, just to see if I could hear. That really doesn't make any sense, but I I, I tried to listen to the the priming of the fuel pump. Now the priming of the fuel pump will sound like a whizzing sound. All right, it would be a low hum whizzing sound because you can hear 
the, the motor just running. All right, it'll, it'll maybe it'll run for like a, a second, maybe less than a second, second or two, whatever it is. And and I, I, I was able to make out that it wasn't the fuel pump because I could hear the humming. All right, maybe it was just maybe it was just me, but I could hear the humming. So I, I was like, you know what? That that's probably not the issue. That's probably not the issue. So I was thinking to myself. What is it that could cause this? And and you because I was running out of troubleshooting ideas for this situation. All right, it's because nothing there's n- nothing noticeable, no, nothing that was noticeably wrong with the car. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? There's a strong possibility that it could be the key fob because I never changed out the key fob battery and never changed out the key fob battery and I had I knew somebody who had this particular situation come up where I try to help them out and it, it turned out that it was something as simple as the key fob battery that was causing it because because it was the battery was either dead or so low that, that that the car could not read could not read that the key fob was in the car the the alarm the the, the remote was in the car so I'm like I'm at CVS it's worth a try. I mean, CVS is worth a try. It'll be a quick fix if it, that is the fix, and and I could save my goldfishes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was like, all right. So I'm gonna take the key fob battery out because anything other outside of this, I couldn't really, I wouldn't be able to diagnose without a scan tool, without going through all the all the fuses, without going through. The relay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But since the fuel pump was making a sound, I knew that the the relay was working. But anyway, I took a chance on it, hoping that maybe I could fix this situation and just get home real fast. So, key fob. Um, I I I went to CVS, bought a battery. I I took the key fob battery out uh, because there's variations of the flat battery, so I I matched it up. Put the battery in, ran back to my uh, car, and try to start it. Crossed my finger, hope, crossed my fingers, hoping that it would start, so that you know the goldfishes would, you know, I I I could save the lives of the goldfishes, and and get my car started without having to put in any more money outside of the six dollars or seven dollars that I spent on the battery, right, and I turned it on. Uh, I tried to crank it. It cranked and it turned on. It cranked and it turned on, guys. So I was relieved. And I've had no issues with it since. I've had no issues with it since. I was relieved. I had no issues with it since, ever since. And it's been a couple of days. I, I know for a fact that it is the 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 battery, um, the fat battery and the key fob that's the problem. And and I'm hoping that if you guys are in this situation, you guys probably are in the, one of these kind of situations where you have a crank no start and you guys are trying to find a solution for it. I'm hoping that you guys, you guys have this easy of a fix as I did. So if you guys have this situation, you guys went through all the troubleshooting steps and you guys are pretty much at a loss as to what to do next. All right. Spend six dollars, get a get a brand new key fob battery. Take the key fob battery out of your, uh, take the old key up key fob battery out of your remote. Swap it out, and then try to start it. Hopefully, hopefully you guys have as much as an easy fix as I did with my car. All right. Hopefully that works out for you. If you guys have any comments, definitely leave a comment in the comment section. Please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. All that good stuff for you guys.